All right, so what lessons will the president take from the vote and what will it mean for his policies? Joining us now from Washington is Norm Ornstein. He is a resident scholar at the American Enterprise Institute, a conservative think tank. Norm, thanks for joining us. Uh, let me ask My pleasure, man. what you took away from the president's speech. I thought he sounded fairly humbled and he did seem like he was willing to work with Republicans on tax cuts. Oh, I think there's no doubt about that. Uh, one of the things that I'm sure the president learned from this election is voters uh, are disappointed that his promise in 2008 to change the tone, the mood, and the way we do uh, policy in Washington uh, didn't work. And they want something a little bit different, whether it's his fault uh, or the other side or everybody. Uh, he knows that the signal to send now is we're going to have to try to work together. And he knows that the power alignments have changed significantly. So that's the message that I got. Whether it works is another matter. You know, Norm, but you know, we had an earlier guest, Michael Aronstein, and he basically says he's intellectually arrogant, not smart enough to understand what he doesn't know. He's talking about the President Obama. He said, don't look for Obama to change his tune. Do do you really think, really think significantly that he's going to change his approach in terms of dealing with Republicans and others? Well, I, I think that that's a, an inaccurate characterization uh, of uh, the president. He is uh, very smart and knows what works. And that's why, uh, despite the setback that we've had here, he had a remarkably successful first two years. What he knows now is it's going to take a different set of tactics. If you go back through how he handled uh, the setbacks as he marched from nowhere to the nomination and then election in 2008, uh, this guy's got a pretty good learning curve. Uh, but I think actually both parties are going to have a lot of work to do with, uh, within themselves before we can figure out where we're going to go. For President Obama, working with Republicans, uh, not just on taxes, but on things like trade, is going to mean taking on his own base. And the Democratic Party in Congress and the House has moved left. Uh, they're not going to be very happy as they're not happy with Afghanistan. And for the Republicans, uh, any attempt to work with him is going to find a lot of anger angry Tea Party types saying, right. that's not why Wait, we won. We won to win. I'm going to step in my co-anchor shoes for a moment because this is something he brings up, Matt Miller. Um, if he was so smart, why did he tackle health care when obviously the economy was in trouble, jobs? I mean, those were the pressing issues. Why go after health care? Well, I, I think it would have been smart to have emphasized jobs much more. But you go after health care because you know that if you don't do it in your first year, it will never get done. For all of those who said, ah, oh, you should wait, the opportunity for a president almost always is in the first year. And so I think what you had was a president who decided to take a long view, and that long view was four years or eight years. I don't think he anticipated that it was going to lead to the setback that it did. The setback that he got was at least as much because we have an economy that is not recovering and that, uh, I think most of your viewers would say that that has much less to do with government policies, uh, the government doesn't run the economy, than with what follows when you have uh, a recession that's caused by a financial crisis. Well, uh, uh, now, they could have done a lot more and could have done a lot more politically, but uh, I, don't, I, I can understand why he took on health care. Well, a lot of people would say that he didn't do health care right. I mean, you have gigantic typically employee-friendly companies like Microsoft saying, hey, after this health care legislation, we can no longer afford to pay for your health care. So you're going to have to step in and pay for a lot more of it. And a lot of companies are saying that. Um, can Republicans actually repeal the health care legislation uh, as, they, as, as they sort of campaigned that they would, or is it going to be too difficult? Well, it was interesting. They started after the health reform bill passed saying repeal. Then they moved to repeal and replace. Now what they're going to find is they can't repeal and it's not going to be so easy to replace. Uh, you know, you can talk a lot about how oh, we want to end pre-existing conditions. The fact is you can't do much about pre-existing conditions without substantially expanding the risk pool. And you can't easily do that without making uh, insurance a requirement. Or you can do it on a much more modest scale. Uh, are they going to repeal these elements that include closing the donut hole or letting people keep their kids insured uh, through the age of 26 or ending lifetime limits? You know, my guess is they're going to have to be a whole lot more selective and it's not going to be easy to pick the parts apart. But I'm sure we'll see some changes before this year is out. What else do you think, Norm, uh, the Republicans are going to work, work on? I mean, what is going to be first and foremost? Is it taxes? Is that the key right now uh, going into the end of the year? 
Well, you know, the real key uh, is can you get a compromise on the tax cuts that otherwise all expire January 1? In this can lame you do duck it in a lame duck session? Add. Right, where a lot of people are going to be trying to delegitimize and discredit it. But if you don't, then you go well into January or even later with a group of people who are coming in who won't be in any mood to compromise. After that, I think we can find some common ground on energy, including alternative energies and maybe nuclear. We can find some common ground on trade, the free trade agreements with Colombia and South Korea, on education with no child left behind. Another interesting area where Republicans are going to have some internal difficulty is business businesses uh, desire to have more infrastructure, but a lot of people coming in who think that's bigger government, more spending, and they don't want it. Bottom line, though, you wrote an article in the New York Times, and you said, you know, kind of a sobering realism for everybody. Gridlock is likely to be the dominant theme. If we have that, then what really does get done, ultimately, Norm? Well, it's going to be a very difficult two years. Not much is going to happen in the legislative process, except possibly for some things at the interstices that I just mentioned. Uh, you know, if you want to be really optimistic, maybe we could have some bipartisan agreement on a, a tax reform package a la Reagan in, uh, and uh, Dan Rostenkowski in 1986. But is that likely? But otherwise, That's the optim- action is going to occur in the executive. No, it's not likely. Let's face it. What, what about so pulling, brace yourselves? What, what about mm. pulling back spending? I mean, can the you know they talk about defunding, for example, the health care plan? Can the Republicans cut spending across the board here? Well, one of the problems is that if they want to defund the health uh, care plan, and uh, incoming Speaker John Boehner has said he wants to take away the $550 billion in Medicare cuts uh, uh, or uh, the, in, uh, the uh, 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 changes in Medicare that would reduce the growth. Do that, and of course, you take away any possibility of a bipartisan compromise on deficit reduction down the road. Uh, Democrats wouldn't agree to anything else. And otherwise, they're talking about largely symbolic things. Freeze to discretionary domestic spending at 2008 levels. Uh, you know, you're talking about a few shovelfuls of dirt back into a hole that's already very, very deep. Okay. And unless you can find a combination of revenues and big changes in entitlements, got it. forget about it. Hey, we got to run. Norm, thanks so much for finding some okay. time for us. You sure. take care. My Tom pleasure. Ornstein.